All right, hello everyone and welcome to, well, a game between Lin and Infi taking place here on Terranistan. I'm thinking I actually, do I need to turn on my speakers? Ready to work. All right, there we go. I'm getting a little bit more in-game sounds right now. There we go. All right. So hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for turning in. And it is going to be a game between Lin and Infi. Lin spawning as the red orc. Meanwhile, Infi spawning as the blue human here on Terranus stand. And well, I got my back to Warcraft sweatshirt. So if, if you guys haven't seen it, there you go. It's back. To, it says back to Warcraft. The back. I don't know. I can't like look at the camera and show you. But yeah, I got my back to Warcraft, back to Warcraft sweater. I think this was for the Shanghai Kickstarter that they did last year. Um, it took a little bit of time to get to me, but well, always like to support the community whenever I can. And well, shipping was like 40 bucks or 50 bucks though, because well, I don't live in Germany. Anyways, let's go ahead and break things down now. We are going to be looking at a human versus orc matchup, and it looks as though we are going to be having an Archmage versus a Blade Master. Unlo yep. Archmage versus Blade Master, no big surprise there. Looking at the timing of the Voodoo Lounge, still no Voodoo Lounge as of yet. So it looks like the Blade Master and a Grunt will do a little bit of easy creeping. Voodoo Lounge should be placed down relatively soon, unless he is going for a very, very fast tech to tier two. And if he is going for an extremely fast tech to tier two, I'm wondering whether or not that um, a Quill Beast Beast Master is really going to be that effective and or strong. Um, did I get a Skype message? I thought I heard a Skype message. I, my apologies. Um, if there is people Skyping me, I should probably fix that. There are some other projects that I'm working on that people need to contact me on Skype. And I think I forgot to mute it. If I hear it again, I will definitely mute it. Otherwise, I don't want to break my concentration as the Archmage now going after the 5-3-3 Creep Camp. There is the Lightning Shield getting in that damage across both of those rogues as the Militia go to town on that Renegade Wizard. Archmage will pick up a Ring of Protection plus two, not necessarily that great, but anything that can mitigate some of the damage from that Blade Master is always helpful. Tome of Strength will be left behind as the Water Elemental going to be going after the Apprentice Wizards here. Archmage leaving behind the Tome of Strength, so the Blade Master is going to get an extra free 25 hit points if he does head back down south. Meanwhile, Blade Master, there he goes. He breaks Wind Walk right there, getting in some extra damage before backing off. Archmage is sitting at level 2. Got the kill on the Apprentice Wizard to get to level 2 just for that extra mana off of the Brilliance Aura. Footman now heading back off to the north, and I remember when Brilliance Aura was 100%, 200%, 300% mana regeneration. That was absolutely crazy, um, as an Archmage could drop Water Elementals fast and then regain the mana faster than the mana actually was used up. Archmage now looking the back around here. You can see the Voodoo Lounge was delayed and canceled. Water Elemental now diving head first into the mist of all of these Orc Burrows. And he's trying to get the ki trying to get killed off by an Orc Burrow. But you can see that that is just not happening. The Peon getting the final shot off there. So the Blade Master is on the board with 42 experience. Archmage still sitting at level 2 trying to put in more pressure has plenty of mana will be picking up boots of speed staff of teleportation and where is it traveling to it is traveling back down to the south and going to be clearing out uh, perhaps this um, assassin creep camp here along with those other bandits you got to be careful though the assassin likes to spread apart all of that damage across multiple units meanwhile the blade master Wind walking, trying to figure out where the Archmage is, not knowing that he teleported down to the south. Very strong play by Infi. Good use of the Staff of Teleportation. And in terms of just buying time, this 15 20 seconds of uninterrupted creeping and should help out a lot as the Archmage is going to get closer and closer to level 3. We are teching the tier 2 about 3 quarters of the way done. Stronghold is already done as the Bestiary Voodoo Lounge just now being placed down alongside that Shadow Hunter. Grunt is currently in play here. Is the Archmage going to be able to get some more damage across multiple units? That footman is not long for this world as a Blade Master is coming across. And there is a little bit of a surround there. All right, Footman down to 88 hit points. Is the Blade Master going to be able to win walk and finish it off before the Footman tries to fall on... Well, the gloves of another unit there getting taken down by that mud golem. 
Water Elemental still doing a good job getting in some extra damage. Blade Master trying to break Windwalk, get some damage onto the Footman as the Archmage is not yet at level 3. Wandering around very quickly, but is also very low on mana at this point. We can see that the keep is already done, but we don't see the dual arcane sanctums. As I say that, they go ahead and prove me wrong. Dual arcane sanctums now being produced. Archmage now wandering around back off to the north. Really wants to get that last bit of experience. I don't believe an apprentice wizard will give 27 experience, but the rogue wizard should in fact do it. There was that frost armor making it a little bit more difficult as the archmage is going to pick up a tome of agility and now wander around once more. Shadow Hunter, Blade Master, both of them need to level up. The Blade Master is not yet at level two, will not have a wind walk. As you can see, a water elemental just adding in a little bit of extra damage across multiple units. The Shadow Hunter down to 79 hit points. It, it did take a lot more damage than it was expecting, and now using those healing salves to try to mitigate all of that damage back. Archmage, however, dropping a water elemental inside the base, now going after the Orc Burrows again triple orc burrow launching those spears the peons are well protected but there is still a loss of lumber at this point and time blade master coming across you can see there's the uh trying to prevent him from escaping and you can see that the water elemental is gonna, just going to end up getting taken down blade master gets to level two very very easily and that may come back to haunt him mountain king now out on the field as well mountain king has well down to 116 mana picks up a wand of illusion and there is an illusionary mountain king now wandering out across the field archmage doing a good job as well we'll finish things off here as the mountain king gonna try and clear out this 55522 creep camp most likely off to the north getting to level two and the archmage just wants to get a little bit more experience to get that level two brilliant aura for those priests and sorceresses the Mountain King still relatively low on mana as you see the Shadow Hunter is at level 2 now. Hex and Healing um, healing Wave should be available. And both sides doing fairly heavy creeping as the Renegade Wizard is going to get focused down by that Blade Master. Blade Master sitting at level 2. Shadow Hunter sitting at level 2. Both sides coming across here as you see one of the Enforcers getting stuck halfway across the other side of the field. Archmage does also have Scourge Bone Chimes giving Vampiric Aura to all of the melee units. Mountain King and Footman, however, the only melee units in this army. I guess some regeneration is better than none. But then again, unless we start seeing Knights, I don't expect the Vampiric Aura to play that big of an impact unless of one particular fight goes a much, much longer. All right, units getting taken down. Mud Golem. Um... Casting slow across multiple units. Mountain King. Where is the Mountain King? Hiding behind a water elemental. Should be able to get to level 3 off of these creep camps as the Blade Master is very much nearby. There is the Wind Walk Strike picking off the kill. I believe he picked up an item of some sort. Did he pick up an item? Uh, could have been the Slippers of Agility. As the Blade Master still wandering around trying to keep tabs on everything. Mountain King sitting at level 2. Are we going to see some of these units finished off here? Nightcrawler going to get taken down. Blade Master steals it again, picking up the Mantle of Intelligence. Big, big steal right there. Mountain King losing out on an extra 45 mana, but more importantly, 10 experience. As the Mountain King now heads straight for the Assassin. Assassin will get taken out very, very fast. My daughter showing up. Um, she will say hi at the end of the cast, right? Hi and bye. All right. As the Mountain King now uses uh, Invisible Mountain King, an illusion now wandering around right across here as we are looking at, uh, well, Priest trying to heal things back up. We do see an expansion already in play. That was Spedbill. Arcane Towers have the Magic Sentry, so the Blade Master is not going to be able to stick around that fight very easily. Shadow Hunter, however, with a plethora of items, plus 6 intelligence, 435 mana with a potion of mana and a clarity potion, means that the Shadow Hunter should be able to stay alive for quite some time. Adding on top of that, the Scourge Bone Chimes, the Blade Master, is going to be difficult to finish off as we see more Guard Towers getting constructed. Arcane Tower, let's take a look. There is some repairing as we are going to be looking at those Grunts trying to make their way across. Raiders positioning all uh, across the board as the Blade Master, Stormbolt onto the Blade Master there. 
Potion of Lesser Invulnerability or Invulnerability could be used. Scout Tower, Arcane Tower was canceled earlier. New Arcane Tower or new Magic Sentry Tower is up. Arcane Tower now being upgraded as the Sorceresses are in the backfield. Vampiric Aura on both sides going to make it very difficult. Water Elemental getting disenchanted here. Healing Wave across the board as the Peasants and the Militia getting taken out. Mountain King still in that front line trying to fight back here. Spirit Link making it difficult to focus on any of the units. And now we are seeing a great, great longevity by Infi. Infi have, or excuse me, uh, yeah, no, not looking that great at all. So Human is now just taking a big, big blow in this fight. Speed Squirrel getting counteracting all of that slow. However, the attack speed is still there. Squirrel of Town Portal now being used as the units are all trying to back off here. And things are just not looking good for the human army at all. Infi taking a lot more damage from Lin in that fight, even though he technically had a home field advantage as the Town Hall will get taken down. Infi is in trouble as Lin gets the base here. There is a lot of slow being cast as we do see, yes, there is the Kodo Beast slowly chomping on a Spellbreaker. There goes the Town Hall and now the armies could just back off and retreat once more. Stormbolt onto a Raider. Raider does get Spirit Linked. Is it going to be able to stay alive? No, it will not. Healing Wave, not enough. Mountain King trying to fight down more units. Doesn't have enough experience or mana though. Bashing his way through a lot of that units though. As we are looking at the Goblin Zeppelin picking up and dropping off. Very, very strong Zeppelin Micro coming in from Lin. As Infi is just not um, keeping up and keeping pace with his opponent's units. He had a stronger hero level. But this is just not turning out to be the case any longer. As the Shadow Hunter in the backfield with so much mana doing such a great job keeping all these units alive. All right, Archmage continuing the fight back here. Blade Master doesn't want to fight any longer. Overall supply count, let's take a look. 53 compared to 45. An 8 supply difference. But you got to remember that difference is probably much larger as we see a Claws of Attack plus 6 now being added. Uh, what, level 2 Critical Strike also added as well. Things can get away very fast. 165 Critical Strike right there. Triple damage. All right, Orc Burrows. Ready to go. 56 compared to 46 supply population. There is some taxation right now for the Orc Army. A uh, human army does not have it, but he does have a smaller army at this point as we're seeing some more farms being placed down. Can Infi build up a large enough army in order to combat against his opponent? Let's take a look. Total resources, or not total resources, current resources. Um, 229 compared to 407. So 407 can train up a good amount of units, but not enough to really make up a, what, a 12%, a 12 supply, no, 16 supply uh, difference between these two units. All right, there you go. Mountain King now trying to come across here, trying to take down all of these units. A peasant may get taken, or a peon may get taken down. There's a bash right there. 49 compared to 59. More and more damage. There is another Stormbolt there using that mana, knowing that, hey, you know what? I have Brilliance Aura. I'll be able to get that back up as the, yes, the Mountain King does turn invisible. All right, let's take a look. Units are now trying to get ready to go. There is a Zeppelin up in the air, keeping track of all of the units. 57 compared to 49. Are we going to perhaps be getting flanked here in just a moment? Mountain King is invisible. Spellbreakers are all in position as they're now going after that precious Voodoo Lounge. We know how important it is, especially if you have a level 3 or 4 Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter can use those potions of healing very effectively as we now see the engagement come across. Mountain King in that front position. All right, in a lot of trouble. There is Blizzard, though. Blizzard going down across multiple units. I don't see an ensnare onto the Archman. And that damage is in fact very high as the Mountain King is still wandering around here. Where are all of the raiders for that ensnare? I do not see it. The Spellbreakers focusing down unit after unit. And as the Blizzard just did so much damage across the board. Spellbreakers need to get back into that front line though. Another Blizzard is now raining down. You can see damage after wave of damage coming across as the Archmage now looks to retreat again. Archmage standing its ground knowing that it can't move anywhere. And I don't know if Lin was expecting the tech, uh, the book swap, skill swap to Blizzard as the Spellbreakers are able to do so much damage while not taking the damage from that Blizzard that, um, that magic immunity is so important here 
as if they get too close, they can just back off. And with that slow, it's very difficult. However, Goblin Zeppelins dropping onto the units are also very problematic. Spellbreakers taking far too much damage again as they do need to back off. Spellbreakers um, now trying to remove the mana from the Blade Master. Blade Master will not be able to wind walk, but Blade Master without mana is, is still a very, very troublesome hero to deal with. Archmage now down to what? 250 mana still has plenty of mana for more and more blizzards again mountain king has 150 mana pretty much should be able to get off some more storm bolts as another spell or another raider gets taken down archmage however taken down after some critical strikes and without the archmage that will pretty much be the game a very strong comeback but ensnare onto the archmage of infi pretty much stopped that comeback short thanks for watching thanks for listening Hope you guys enjoyed it. You want to say bye? Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone.